Hey, it's our job. It's our job. Okay, can I suggest that you make yourself comfortable? This one looks so congested. Can move you a, move a bit just forward? A bit the yeah. people in front. Be comfortable. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. think the behind. Let's be comfortable. Those people, latecomers, uh, can't come in. Yeah. You just make sure that this space here is enough for people to bow. Okay. Then you can come forward. Okay, very good. Now shall we do a bit of meditation? Okay. Mind resting. Okay. Can I invite everyone? Lights out, please. Where's the PROs? You all must come in and sit. Okay. Quietly. Now, this is what I will ask you to do. Adjust your body. Be comfortable. Be restful. It's okay if you fall asleep. You just don't snore. But it's okay. I don't have to worry about you falling off the floor. So it's okay. Relax. Make yourself comfortable. Then you do this. Deep breath in. You okay, close your eyes. Deep breath in. When you breathe out, breathe out slowly. Deep breath in again. Then you breathe out slowly. Deep in. Slow release. Now you scan your body. If there is any tightness, you just relax that part. Your body must be relaxed. The body feels comfortable. Don't worry, just relax. Now reflect on this. We are here because of our loved ones that came before. All the loved ones that came before, they are the reason why we are here. Today, we give thanks to the conditions of them in our being in our life. We honor them. We show our respect. We remember them with gratitude. So in your mind, in your own mind, you say, I invite whoever, name, all your past loved ones, in your mind, you say, I invite you all to come. For this is my way to give back. It's not a lot I can do, but this I can. This is as guided by the Buddha. If you feel joy, however slight, you feel the joy. The joy makes the mind light. So you feel you feel good. If you feel good, just feel deeply. You feel deeply. Let this feeling of lightness and joy, gratitude and respect wash over you. This is the power of the mind. 
the human mind is able to touch divinity by this. So here you are experiencing this and sharing, sharing with the loved ones you have called to join us. Sitting here, reciting the triple gem, doing this quiet meditation, listening to a Dhamma talk, all these are powers of the mind. Gives you a lot of lightness, generate a lot of merits. The Buddha said, just by a moment, a moment of love and metta in your heart, just that one moment is far more meritorious than building a Dhamma center for the monks. This is very powerful. You're partaking in it. So feel good about this. Grateful to BF for organizing this. Grateful to the Dhamma and the Buddha for living behind the Dhamma. In your mind, take a mental bow to the Buddha in gratitude. When you are done, feel good. One last time, feel this joy. Offer it to your departed loved ones. May you all be well and happy wherever you have a reason. Then we will slowly rouse our body slowly roused it. So we breathe normally. Stretch your fingers. Stretch, wriggle your toes. And then you open your eyes. Whatever you do, don't stretch before you or beside you. It's okay to laugh. Okay. Lights on, please. <laughs> I have never conducted a class of meditation with so many people. There was once that BF used to have this number. Then after COVID, and then online Zoom, and the numbers dwindled to half. like dwindled to half. I'm entertaining you because there are new people coming in. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Hello, how are you? Konnichiwa. Hey, the Korean one, how does it go? Annyeong hatsayo. Salamat datang. Okay, shall we begin? No more latecomers, right? Okay, lock the door. Let out the dogs. Shall we? A slides. Slide show. Okay, this is just going to be a very short talk. But this talk is for the people who may not know what we are doing and why we are doing this. Then for the, the rest of you veteran, you just sit down there quietly meditate and continue to jam to generate your own merits, okay? Okay. Why are we here today? Because there's free food. No, wrong answer, okay? We're here today to recall. 
in gratitude and to honour our departed loved ones. I am very happy to see you all here. This is the third time we are doing this. This is the third year we are doing this. It was introduced two years back because of COVID. COVID caused a lot of death. A lot of people couldn't come together. I remember our first session, the number was a fraction of this. A fraction of this because of COVID, because we have to restrict the numbers. But there was a lot of people who wanted to show their love and to remember the ones who have passed on that year. When we started out, it was only like this. Then we had such a wonderful time, even though the number was really small, like a third of the number, I think. You remember a third? The first year? It's about that. Lah. A third of the number. But we had a lot of fun. Through our mask, we laugh. Okay, through our mask, we, we had all the fun. So they came along and said, should we do it again the next year, which is last year? And then I went, I, I thought it was like a contract for one service only. And they said, let's do it again, let's do it again. Last year, we had even more fun. There were more of us. And, you know, when you sit down and you recall and you, you offer offered, uh, uh, love and compassion, they don't get switched off. All this lightness of the mind doesn't get switched off. So, we were intoxicated by all the joy and laughter and so on and so forth. So again, they came like, should we do it again this year? And this year was fantastic. Why? But this year is the first time we were doing it in the daytime. Last year, part of the reason why the, the number should have been bigger, but it was smaller, was because it was New Year's Eve. People got party, la, got this. La. Who remembers the, the, the party, right? They all went for the party and the drinking and the orchard road, here we come. Ah, okay. So it was small. This year, I expected it to be much bigger, simply because it's daytime. But this number actually far exceed what we have been doing. And if you have a lot of fun, the odds are they're going to do a number next year and then we will have to borrow the hall next door. Okay. We are here really because we care. And these are loved ones who had loved us and cared for us. So we want to, at least for one, one afternoon, we do our best for them. Okay? The second reason, actually, and this is important, huh? because later on, when the events start, there will be many names. Many of you will be like, joke flower, or come here. Or, it's, it's like a marketplace. And this year, it will be a marketplace because so many of you. So here, here, don't care. We just enjoy. Everyone gives something, you rejoice. You are rejoicing that we can do this. That you have the means and you have the time, the resources, the opportunity. So we want to rejoice. Okay? We will be patient. We will be happy. We will enjoy this together. What is the third reason? You know, when you're alone and you are happy, it's called joy. When you're with company, it's called rejoice. Because there's a lot of, it's multiplier effect. It's compounded effect. Okay? And we are fellow Buddhists together, observing an activity the Buddha had taught us together. This is one way Remember events like this is one way of helping yourself return to the Dhamma. Okay? Because life will end. When life ends, how much of Dhamma do you remember? There is the teaching, there is the Buddha, but above all, there is the company. So you practice together you laugh together, you rejoice together, you will remember the way home. Okay? This is important. And finally, how much better way can you imagine spending an afternoon ending the year on a high spiritual note? That's 
that's the reason why we choose 31st. Ending the year on a high spiritual note. Okay. The Buddhist belief. Some of us, some of us, let's be honest. Before the Buddha, everybody honest. Some of us may not know how to think about life and beyond. Death and beyond, sorry. Death and beyond. Some of us say, got rebirth day? Some of us say, some of us may say, yeah, I better believe lah. But actually, I'm not sure. Right? Yes? No? Don't know? I was once in your shoes. In fact, it's about 10 years ago. Maybe, yes, about 10 years ago. Slightly before that, I was in the space where I said, I'm a Buddhist. The Buddha taught this. I believe because I have to. It's because it's the Buddha's teaching. But I don't know. Eh? Then I kept this very quiet. And you know that I am not so comfortable because I never talk about this. If you go and check out my talks before a certain point, about 10 years ago, before that, I never talk about, I hardly ever talk about, correction, I never talk about rebirth. I don't even talk about death. I mean, I know it happened, sorry, but I don't talk about it. But at some point, it shifted. It shifted because I finally had my own personal experience. And it left in my mind such deep clarity, there is another life. There is. If you're very good after everything, I'll tell you the story. Not before, okay? This, this is not about me, so I don't talk about that. But I was reconciled. I was very clear. There is another life. Then... The question is, where is that life? Where else? Rebirth destination? You tell me 31 player exists, I say no. We take it from the Buddha's teaching itself. First and foremost, the Buddha never said 31 planes of existence. Okay? That's not how he said it in the suttas. In the suttas, and different suttas has a little bit of difference in the details. But this one is the big summary. And this one, this summary is good enough for you. So next time people say, where is your birth or existence? Five types. There is the hell, the Niraya, he calls it. It's hell. There's the animal realm. The peta, oh, it's so hard to find a peta photo. I mean, they don't hang around like cheese, right? So you have to go and dig, 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 and you found something. Human is easy. Also, no picture of God. You know what? In the Sutta, it is said again and again, the celestial realm, it's light. It's very bright. So I find the picture that can show you a change in shape, and it looks pretty God-like, isn't it? Quite celestial. Like, it's just, just lamb. Lah. <laughs> But the idea is because the Buddha actually, there are many, many stories. If you go into the suttas and discourses, you would actually find many stories about these beings. All of them mentioned. All these broad spectrums are mentioned. Of course, uh, can you guess which is the one that has the num most number of realms? Oh, well done. These are all the educated ones. <laughs> the ones who know the Dhamma, their Dhamma, right? Indeed, the gods has the most number of realms. Like everyone's take out a new realm. It's, it's true. They have a lot. They have so many. There is actually one teaching where you come, 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 come. If I exceeds your 31 plane, no, 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 no. There's plenty, plenty, plenty of realms. And uh, there is no mention here the different shades of gods. There are at least three shades, three types. Gods, huh? There is the celestial ones from the ones that enjoy the sense spaces to the ones that is mind only, okay? Mind space. Then there are the terrestrial ones. When you do your chanting and it says Bhutta, those are your celestial ones. The ones who live, sorry, the, the terrestrial one, the ones who live on this earth, on this space, this material space. Okay? So that's the broad one, huh? And this, no questions. Today, no question, no Q&A. Today, you just take my word for it. Okay, so these are your different rebirth destinations that the Buddha had 
talk about in the suitors and rebirth. Rebirth, rebirth destinations is an extremely important part of the Buddha's teaching. It's the, not the most important. He didn't come, he didn't spend centuries and millenniums and so on practicing and correcting himself to tell you this. This is not his intent. But as part of the teaching, as part of our belief system, we have to build that deep appreciation of this. Because one day, you will die. I'm not cursing you. Okay? It's a given that one day, we all will stand at the bus stop and wait for our turn. It will happen. And because that will happen, it is dukkha. For the ones who go through this journey with you, and for you yourself, you may say, I die already, nothing now like that, Lord, I go already, ma. No. At the moment when you're moving on, there's so many people you're leaving behind. You actually have more to lose. They only have you to lose. Okay? So, understanding that life is a cycle is an extremely important part of our practice. It reinforces the point of dukkha, suffering. Okay? We are gathered here not just to know scientifically or discourse-wise what, what, what's the teaching. We are actually gathered here to ask ourselves, what can we do? And what we are doing, I'm going to share with you two points here. There are many stories, there are many things, but I'm just going to focus on this. The first one, the genesis of merit sharing. I call it the Bimbisara story. For those of you who have heard of the Bimbisara story, please raise your hand. So few, I'm in utter shock. Seriously? The rest of you never heard of the Bimbisara story? Hey, hands up again. I don't meet Matty Motor. Still very little, very few. This is how it started. Buddhism, okay, the, in, the, in our tradition, the, the, there wasn't this notion. When the Buddha started his business, right? When the Buddha started his Dhamma business, there was no marriage sharing. He just chong, he went to a, a, a Bodhigaya and like teach, then there's enlightenment, and then there's the saints, and then he went around and teach, and all this is all the front part. The first part of the Buddhist history, the first part of the Buddhist history is about Dhamma realization and Dhamma propagation. Those are the two key things. Dhamma realization, understanding what the Buddha taught so that you can fix your own mind. I call it Dhamma DIY. You can fix your own mind. Then you fix already, right? You understand what the teaching is about. Don't you want to help your loved ones? Don't you want to help people that you care for? Because truly, the real joy, the real joy, the unconditioned joy comes only when you truly understand the Dhamma. What is the Dhamma? The Dhamma is basically understanding how the mind works, understanding how life flows. If you understand, if you have that understanding, you know how to fix it. Those of you who are engineers, you know what I mean. You understand a system, you can fix it. You don't understand a system, you fix what? Go, the, the laptop doesn't open, you go and bang, boom, boom. My style, go boom, go boom. Then very chala already call Apple salesperson to kind of fix it because I don't understand the system. But once you understand the system, you can fix it. Agree? So many people, so little noise. Huh? You understand, you can fix. So that was the first thing. Teaching people, propagating Dhamma, that's it. Until Bimbisara story happened. So, there were people like you and me, except that he was king, so he's Prince Charles, I'm King Charles, so he's king. Bimbisara was a king. He was a, not only a king, he was a very famous and important king. From his space, from his land, comes Asoka. You all know Asoka, okay? Asoka, trace, 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 back goes to Bimbisara. That's the lineage, okay? And Bimbisara was the first king, the first Buddhist king who encountered Buddha. So he is the guy with the two eyes. For those of you who don't know what I'm saying, come for this morning talk. 
So anyhow, this king understood the Dhamma, realized the Dhamma, he entered what you call first stream. So Buddhists also got saints one. But our saint got gradation, one, two, three, four. Okay? So he, un he entered the stream, he really understood. He was in tears, in joy. Then when you are very joyous, what do you do? You give dana. I'm just telling you, you should do it like that. Joyous, you give dana. He is so joyous. He gave Buddha, Bukit Imah Hill. A park. It's called Weluwana. Weluwana Park was the first forested area offered to the Buddha for Dhamma work. Okay? Not Jetawana. Weluwana. Next time we start at the center, we'll call it Weluwana. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a forested area. But when he gave that piece of land and he offered dana, tremendous merits, right? Merits that shot through the roof. Yeah, he didn't share. He went home happy with himself, went to bed, haunted by cowering in the night. That's a whole bunch of collective howling. It's a chorus of howling at the palace gate. But he didn't get them come in, right? They're all howling away. I was really terrified. I mean, wouldn't you? I mean, you do done already then <laughs> at the door, at your driveway there. Oh, oh, oh. You'll be terrified, okay? You will call police. But he's a key, he cannot call police, right? Next day, he went to look for Buddha. And then, Buddha, 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 this is what happened last night. The Buddha said, oh, yeah, no big deal. It's your past relatives. Then he went, what does that mean? And then the Buddha explained. There were these uh, relatives, departed relatives, who have waited millennium for them to be able to receive merits. So this is the time you waited millennium for Taylor Swift to sing to you. Then she tell you, I don't come in. <laughs> You'll be quite furious, right? So they were waiting for him, waiting for the sharing of merits. Then he didn't know the Buddha didn't say you should do. He didn't say. I mean, Buddha wouldn't say. He won't preemptive one. You got trouble, you go to him, he'll tell you how to fix it. But he's not going to read the future for you. So when that happened, they were in, they were in horrors. They were crying and they were willing. There's a lot of them wailing and crying. Then he said, oh no, what can I do to fix this? The Buddha said, offer another meal. You offer again. So now, depending on which version you read, depending on which version you read, it could be stretched over three days or it could be done once, not sure of which version, okay? But the idea here is that he offered food, then they all turn nice, the nutriment, they, they, can, they, they all turn nice. So Bimbisara offered food to the Buddha and the Sangha, they turn nice, but they're naked. So offered rope, and then they were dressed in rope. I cannot remember what else they offered, like he offered, but basically, now they got transportation. And they have moved on. Then they move on happily. This is called the Bimbisara story. Our sharing of marriage in the manner it's done, you see that water, pouring the water? That came from Bimbisara. The Buddha thought that it be done that way for him. Do you need to have this water? Probably not. You actually don't need to. But you are, Bimisaras knew they need ritual. Ritual to anchor the mind and associate with something. They can see, they can relate. That's the idea. And so, there is a water sharing. Okay? Just as a footnote, uh, when you pour, you see, look at the water, very really small, right? You see that, that little vessel is very small and it's pouring into a space, a container, which is also very small. But it has a receptacle, a bigger one. The idea here is your marriage, you don't want to stop. So you want to keep pouring. Then when they chant, you keep pouring, it will overflow. You let it overflow. Then you say, but what if I run out of water? Then you dip the container into the water as if the flow is continuous. Okay? So I tell you how to do it, yeah? Now, there is another sutta 
in Kudaka Pata. Kudaka Pata K H P T uh, seven. Kudaka Pata. Okay. In that in that collection, there is this sutta called Tirokutta Sutta. Outside the wall here, very angmo, without the wall. The idea is the same. It's outside the wall. Some they call it across at the crossroad, whatever it is. The idea here is in in this sutta. In this discourse, the Buddha say it is our duty to help. It is our duty to help. And I will end this talk and go through the sutta in detail. Okay? Right now, I won't talk about this. Later, we'll go into a bit of detail. So, bottom line, you can do something, you share merits. But you cannot share an empty car, right? Meaning, you, if you don't have merit, you come here, I'm going to share merit. Then you're like, you to see me, huh? <laughs> you want to feed me, you bring an empty Tupperware. So what is merits? Merits would be any kind deeds you do. Any kind ones. BF has very kindly offered you a space to do merits. So you contribute your dana to building a center. Or, or before you came along the way here, you sit on MRT, choo 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 choo. Then someone stand down there, you see that they need a seat. You got up, you let the fellow take over because he, she needs it. That's merit. Someone, one, huh? someone, one? someone, one? but it still counts as one. Whatever that you do with a wholesome mind, the mind comes from a good place. Okay, it comes from a good place. I cannot finish the food. Huh? I, I let you have it. That's not merit, okay? <laughs> that is, I don't know what it is, but it is not. Okay? Remember, huh? anything that is wholesome giving, it does not have to be money related. If you just came from the hospital or tomorrow night, there is chanting for the departed. You come and join us. Don't worry about the 4D. You just come and join us. That's merits. Okay? You give time. You give energy. You give money. You give resources. All are merits. You give kind words. So afterwards, if you didn't do anything, never mind. Turn to the next one. So you say, may well you be well and happy. Merits. As long as it's kind and giving. Giving. Okay? That's merits. See? Very easy. Huh? But this merits very easy. Okay, some of you may have this question. Do the gifts, do your offering really help? And this is from Janu Soni Sutta. Answer, yes, immediately helpful if they are reborn in the Pita realm. You remember Bimbisara's uh, Bimbi relatives, they were all reborn in hell. They made their way back to the Pita realm. So it was only when they are in the Pita realm they could receive. Okay, then the next question is, what's your next question? Yes, immediately helpful if they're reborn in Pita realm. What's your next question? Ah, uh, what if they're not there? Okay, ah, uh, okay, wait, wait, first, first, what the Buddha say? Uh, there in the Pita realm, they survive feeding on the food of the beings in the, so they survive on the food of the beings in the, so they are Pita, they survive on food offered to Pita. Or they, or else they survive feeding on what friends, relatives, friends, colleagues, relatives can provide from provide them from here. So you can offer food to Peta. This is you can offer food to Peta. The conditions there are right, so the gift aids the one who lives here. At least there, sorry. Janu Soni Sutta Anguttara Nikaya 10.177. For those of you who look at the word A, M, da, 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 don't worry. Come for the FC. We will teach you. Your question, if don't have, how? If I have no relatives reborn there, if the one you want to give it to is not there, the Buddha replied, then others who are born there will benefit. That is why when you write, you write the names of the individual, then you add in a line that says, and all other departed relatives. So you give a passport to everyone who had, who had an association with you. Who had an association with you. Okay. Then what's the next question? Ah, 
you're very quiet. This person called Janu Soni was a Brahmin. He was the type that not so sure, not so sure where to ask the Buddha. And he was quite stubborn. His next question, hypothetically, if don't have how? I don't have any relatives in the Peta realm. The Buddha says, not possible. Cannot, it cannot be. Because you have been there for so, you have been around for so long. It is impossible, it cannot happen that that place does not have your departed relatives. In all this long time, you have been around for so long. Anyway, hypothetically, if indeed there isn't one, then you yourself will benefit. The Buddha say it's never fruitless for the donor. You yourself will benefit. If, he said, uh, this is a Buddha say, all, all in yellow means he said, donors will enjoy plenty wherever you are reborn. If you are reborn, elephant or dog, okay, ready, try, 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 okay? You're like, well, then you become an even now, you become dog. Then you got food, drink, garland, and other adornments. So you will be the Pekingese who's sleeping in an air-conditioned room and ferry to your vet in the Mercedes-Benz. No need to take bus. Okay? You, your dana, the dana will buy you, your dana will buy you a perpetual grab ride in a Mercedes-Benz, no less. They say, yeah, but I want Porsche also. Can you make your aspiration? <laughs> you know, there are... There are... You, I'm not sure if you have heard of the story. There was a dog. Real story, yeah? I didn't concord this one. This dog, the owner died, left the dog his entire fortune. Left this dog his entire fortune. So in the name of this dog is some big time residents in the US. I even remember the stories from the US. Super high end house with butler and his own lawyer and go and apply for the lawyer job. Okay. Existential conditions in the beta realm. Okay. If you are in not only you choice choice for a being in the beta realm and this is from this sutta. Again, uh, Kutaka Pata 7. This is 7. Oh, yeah, this morning. Okay. Outside the wall. I'm only going to read to you because the, the English translation is fantastic. Outside the wall, they stand at the crossroads and doorposts to their own home returning. What it means is the departed loved ones, if they are reborn in the Peta realm, they can be waiting outside your door, but they cannot enter. They, so the beings come back and they cannot enter. You didn't invite them. Okay. When an ample meal of food and drinks is spread, no one remembers them because of the beings come. The word in the square um, quotes is added into the sutta. You will remember someone, if he's come up good enough, they had a very good association with you, you will always remember them. But if they were so bad, you'll try to forget them. And so no one remembers them, okay? Those who have sympathy, i.e. you, give thus to their relatives, pure, rich food and drinks, occasionally and thinking, let this be for our relatives. May they be happy. If indeed they are around, this one I add in one, if indeed they are around, you invite them to partake, they will come happily and rejoice. Those departed relatives come gather there and they will rejoice at the food and drinks and they will say, Long life, long live our relatives on account of whom we get this. To us, this offering has been made and to the donors, it is not without benefit. So when you give the beings benefit, you also benefit. The Buddha says, if you happen to be reborn an animal, you will be living, you will be chauffeured around in Mercedes Benz. <laughs> I'm glad you like Mercedes Benz <laughs> then the Buddha said 
there in the space of the of the departed, there is no farming, cattle keeping is non-existent. There is no trading such as buying, selling gold. This stanza, this four lines tells you that that place has no industries, no economic activities. But it also gives you an idea that in the time of the Buddha, that's the kind of occupations they have. It was a simpler society. Okay, it's a simple land. But already they are very happy with gold. So gold has been around for a long time. On what is given here, the deceased, the departed ones subsist there. They don't have, they just, that realm has nothing. The realm has nothing. In fact, there are stories, there are stories in the canon that talks about how these beings, you remember what he says, right? They either eat their own food or they eat the food you offer them. Then you say, what's their own food? Vomitus. Vomitus at the dustbins. So you will hear stories, you will read when you go through the suttas, going through the suttas, you actually would encounter here and there a mention that such and such an Arahan going on his arms round saw them eating very vomitous. That is if they can have nutriment. There are those that couldn't have nutriment, so they will starve. Okay. Okay, all before until this point, the translation was done by Ajahn. Agachita. Then you say, why you change a Chan one? I said, and my reply is, I pick the one that's easiest for you to understand and it's still consistent with the original teaching. So sometimes the translation, because it's a verse, the translation can be hard to understand. Even as rain, even as water rain on high ground flows to the lowland accordingly. So what is given here reaches the departed ones. Just as rivers that are full fill the sea. So what is given here reaches the departed ones. Okay? Ajasujato's translation, thinking, this is the beta. No, 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 this is not the beta. You should reflect like this. You, you the person who is making the offering should reflect like this. This departed being gave to you, worked for you, was your relative, friend, companion. You should give gifts for the departed, remembering what they have done before. Okay? This is the mind that you want. When you are offering, when you're remembering them afterwards, if you can recall with gratitude, what they had done for you. For no tears or grief or any other lamentations are of any use to the departed as long as their relatives continue. Me you just keep grieving this way, it's not going to be helpful for them. But the gift that has been given and well placed in the Sangha is of benefit to them for a long time. Immediately it is of benefit. So it can help them today, it can help them tomorrow, it can be helpful for a long time. This then is the definition of a relative's duties. And by this great honour has been done to the departed. So by doing dana, by observing marriage sharing, you would have honoured the departed. You, have, you would have done something practical with your gift. Strength given to monk means something practical with your gift. And no small merit produced by you. Okay? This is why we are doing all this. Now, we're going to start the ceremony. Can I invite all of you? Okay, just for a brief moment, just a minute. Think of the ones that you are offering to. Just think of it. Recall them. Recall them. Okay. Remember them what they have done for you, what are you grateful for? doesn't have to be a long story. This is a short one. Dad, Mom, thank you for bringing us up. Thank you for showing us, guiding us the way. Thank you for all that you have done for me. Something like this, okay? Just a short one. And then you will do this. Let us focus our minds 
and recall with love and compassion our departed loved ones. Invite them to come and partake in this meritorious and joyous event. Now I want you to open your eyes and read this together. Read it slowly. Read it slowly so that you can recall your own merits. Today, read together aloud. Today, we have done the following meritorious deeds. Slow down, slow down, pause. We have done the following deeds. We have taken refuge in the triple gem, observed the five precepts, meditated a little, listened to a Dharma talk, and offered dana to construct a Buddhist center dedicated to Dharma propagation. We now offer a share of these merits to our departed loved ones. May they appreciate and rejoice in this sharing of merits. May they be well, happy, and peaceful. And may they be reborn in a better realm. May these merits be the cause and condition for our own spiritual growth until realization of Nibbana, the ultimate happiness, the greatest of peace. Spend a moment rejoicing. Feel the joy. Okay? Now we will start. Eileen, you will take over. We will always remember with gratitude and love the life of the late, and then we will continue. Eileen, please take over. Can you see me now? Yeah. Yes. Ah, excellent. Okay. So that's it. So I just switch it. Okay. Start video. No. Okay. That side. Ajahn, can you see us? No, I can just I can just see a D. There's a big D on the screen. That's all I can see. Yeah. D on the screen. Big D. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, now I can see you. Okay, that's better. <laughs> All right. Okay. Wow, that's really that's cool. That's our okay. people in the hall. Say hi. Yeah, Hello. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Thank you right. for accepting our invitation, Ajahn. Yeah, I'm very delighted to be here. That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> we were just in time. We just finished the uh, um, sharing of uh, merits with our departed relatives and friends. With the uh -huh. offering of flowers. Yeah. Okay. So we're just in time waiting for you. Yeah. All right. So, uh, okay. Good to let us start or not? Uh... Yes. Mm. Okay. So uh, I'll just give a short talk and then we'll do some blessing at the end. Is that the idea? Uh, yes. John. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. So, uh, uh, Coming to the end of the year is, you know, is always a um, great opportunity to kind of take stock and to look forward a little bit, uh, which I think is very useful occasionally. And uh, so this is a uh, great opportunity for that. Uh, and especially it is about perhaps making some resolutions for next year. Uh, what can we approve? How can we make our Dhamma practice even deeper? How can we uh, kind of, you know, connect the dots in, in our everyday life to kind of have a continuity in our practice uh, and not stop all the time, not forget about what is really important in life and, and these kind of things. So, so I think this matters. So this is a good opportunity for that. Uh, and um, to give you a little bit of uh, kind of background, if you like, I uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was in Sydney and we had a book launch uh, and this book launch was a launch of the uh, Tipitaka, you know, the kind of the Pali scriptures, all the suttas and the Vinaya, etc. And uh, it was a very grand kind of opening. You know, we had the, it was done at the National or, or the New South Wales State Library, a very grand building uh, in Sydney. And we had the premier from Western Australia was there uh, to kind of uh, 
uh, you know, give the occasion some special kind of, uh, you know, power or whatever. And uh, then, of course, I had to talk a little bit, and Bhante Sujato, my good friend, also had to talk a little bit. Uh, and when I talked, I said that this is the most important event in Australian history. Uh, <laughs> and uh, which is very, a bit naughty to say, it's a fairly small event, maybe only 150 people or so. Uh, but we were launching books, yeah, the books, the Pali Tipitaka. And uh, in my opinion, the reasons I said that uh, is because as far as I can tell, the Pali Tipitaka or the Pali Suttas uh, are the most important literature in human history. Uh, yeah, the most important literature in human history. Just allow that to sink in a little bit, what that means. Uh, why? How can we say that that is the case? In, in what sense uh, are the Pali Suttas the most important literature in human history? Uh, and they are in the sense that uh, these suttas, uh, they primarily what they are about uh, is the idea of right view, uh, seeing the world in the right way, understanding what the world is about. Uh, and of course, right view is really what that is. It is the foundation for everything else. If you have right view, then you can start to make right decisions. Uh, that is why from right view on the Noble Eightfold Path, uh, the next factor is always right intention. Uh, so right view is the foundation for everything here. If you haven't got right view, you cannot make good decisions in life. You cannot have the right intention. The choices become bad as a consequence. And so the problem for uh, the large, you know, almost everyone in the world is that they haven't got right view. And this is one of the reasons why we have so many problems in the world. This is the reason we have why we have so many wars, this is the reason why we have so many social ills. This is why we have addiction. This is why we have depression. This is why we have, you know, uh, stupid uh, uh, spiritual paths and all of these kind of things because of wrong view. So wrong view is a big, big problem. And then if you have scriptures that are all about right view, all about understanding the world in the right way, then they do become, in fact, uh, the most important scriptures, uh, the most important literature in human history. Uh, and this is how important it is. Uh, and this is why it kind of builds up under the entire Noble Eightfold Path, uh, all the practice that we do as Buddhists, uh, and why this is what makes everything possible in our life. Uh, so um, if right view is uh, that important, uh, then uh, what does it mean in practice? Uh, and I'm going to give you just a couple of very simple examples of how to use right view. And these are things that maybe you can, if you wish, you can take it into the new year and, and you can use as reflections uh, as you practice uh, in the coming year. And one of these examples was a business leader that I read about some time ago. Huh? And he had this very nice philosophy for his business. Uh, and this philosophy was something that I had never heard before anyone else have, uh, but he was obviously quite a wise person. Uh, and he said that my philosophy when I run this business uh, is that I always regard everyone in my company uh, as doing their best. Uh, yeah, everyone is doing their best in my company. Uh, and it doesn't matter if they appear lazy on the surface. Uh, it doesn't matter if they appear stupid or not so intelligent or uh, uneducated or whatever it might be, uh, if they're kind of wasting their time, uh, regardless of what they're doing, I look, I regard everyone as doing their best. Uh, and this is a beautiful way of thinking about the Buddhist idea of non-self. Uh, the idea of non-self means that in essence, we are uh, the sum of the cause and conditions that work on us. Uh, and because we are that, we are always in a sense doing our best. We can't do anything other than what the causes and conditions in our life almost force us to do. And so when you uh, look at the world in this way, using this idea of anatta or non-self uh, in a kind of in a skillful way to uh, allow you to look at people in a new way in this, in this sense, uh, then you're opening up the possibility for compassion and kindness in the world. Uh, and of course, it's not just in business life. It is about all the people in our life. It's about the people in our family. It's about the people at work. It's about the people in the BF. It's about the people we meet on the street. It's the people we read about in the newspaper. It is about the politicians in the world who sometimes seem to do strange things. It's about the problems in the war zone. It's about everyone. Everyone everywhere is, in a sense, doing their best. 
And this allows us to kind of give up some of the resentment and the anger we sometimes may feel because of things going wrong. Uh, and we may start to look at people in a new way. And instead of getting angry with them, uh, we start to think of, well, what are the causes? Uh, what are the conditions uh, that actually will make them better people? Uh, if you are a business leader, what are the things that I can do to make them think in the right way so they actually do become more productive? Anger is not the answer. Being upset is not the right way. We need to use wisdom to overcome these things. Uh, so try to use this if you can. Always remember, everyone is doing their best. Uh, and when with that kind of attitude, uh, I guarantee that you will have far more compassion and metta for all the people around you. Uh, so that is the, was the first one, the first little kind of thing that you might uh, may use if you wish for the new year. Uh, another thing that I have been saying recently is... Uh, the idea that uh, you know kindness uh, is so foundational and so important in our life, uh, because whenever we are kind, whenever we uh, live up to the noble eightfold path or whatever, we're taking a step forward. We're moving forward on the spiritual path. Uh, we're not letting ourselves down. We're actually building up our qualities within. Uh, and every time we make a mistake, uh, that means we're taking one step backwards on the path, uh, and that is really detrimental to our practice. Uh, so we want to always take a step forward if we can. Uh, and the simile that I have been using to explain this is like, you know, when you come to a street, for example, yeah, you are in Singapore, you're about to cross the street, uh, not at the pedestrian crossing because then it's too easy, but you are crossing somewhere else, yeah? What do you do when you cross the street? Uh, well, what you do is that you are, first of all, you are a little bit afraid, right? Because you know there are cars coming. Uh, and because you are a little bit afraid of the danger, uh, you always look left and right before you cross the street. Uh, yeah, no one in their right mind would just walk into the street, right? I, <laughs> maybe some people would, but it's not a good idea just to walk into the street. Uh, and so you always look left and right because you know it's dangerous. Uh, but I would argue that a far greater danger than being run over by a car, that just means you die. It just means you get reborn again. You carry on in the future. But a far greater danger than actually being run over by a car is saying something wrong, acting in the wrong way, even thinking something wrong. Because then you are taking a step backwards on the spiritual path. When you die, you're not taking a step backwards. You just die and you just carry on. But if you do something wrong, you're going backwards. And so every time you are about to say something, every time you're about to do something, even every time you're about to think something, remember, look left, look right, first of all. Are there any dangers? Am I about to say something or act in a way that is not appropriate or which is against the noble and full path or which is stupid in some sense? And if it is, Look at the alternatives. Is there another way I can act? Is there another way I can speak? Yeah. So as to avoid going against the, you know, the general practice that we're trying to do. Huh? So in this way, we build up the sense of urgency, the sense of importance that now is the time to act. Now is the time to do what is right. Huh? And I cannot really wait to some kind of future. It is urgent. It is important. It is like crossing a street. Huh? So remember this idea of crossing a street. Huh? So these are two of just two simple ways of uh, perceiving the world or looking at the world to make the practice a little bit easier because this is so important, uh, uh, you know, especially uh, when we get very busy, go back to work and all these kinds of things. Uh, but I, I want to finish off by uh, just also giving a very brief idea of uh, uh, what to do to enable you to remember advice on the spiritual path. Uh, it is very easy to listen to advice occasionally and remember some of the, uh, uh, the answers, some of the good ways of practicing the spiritual life. Uh, but to be able to, in general, improve our conduct, in it, to be able to, in general, remember all of these kind of things, uh, it is so important to come back to these teachings again and again and again. Uh, and I would say if there's one thing that you should remember for the new year, if there's one New Year's resolution that you should make, it is to come back and listen to these teachings again and again and again and again to allow yourself to remember all of these very important things. That is more important than anything else. 
So make sure that you come back to Good Dhamma Talks maybe once a week or twice a week or whatever it is that you require. If you have the opportunity and you enjoy it, read something nice and inspiring, go back to the Buddhist suttas if you can and if you enjoy that. And as you do this and as you read and you listen to the Dhamma, you allow yourself to be reminded. And when you are reminded in this way, then that is the powerful uh, setting of right view inside of you, uh, which then will guide you in the right direction. Your intention will be right. Uh, you'll be walking in the right way. Uh, and if you have right view in this sense, uh, you will already be going against the stream, against how almost ev everyone else in the world is acting. Uh, and you will become, as you do that, you become a blessing for yourself uh, and also a blessing uh, and like a uh, like a uh, you know light for the rest of the world because they will then see that you are actually living a good life and they will be able to follow you along as well. Uh, so be a light to yourself and be a light to the world. Uh, and uh, as you do that, as you practice in this way, uh, then all good things happen as a consequence. So, so that is just a, a short little uh, talk for you. Uh, and uh, uh, what do you want to do next, Eileen? Yeah. Yes. Uh, share merits and uh, give us a blessing. Uh, okay. Jack? So okay, so we'll share some merits and we'll we'll give a blessing to end. Anyway, it's always nice to share merits, uh, and uh, there's always someone out there who is able to receive those merits. So it's always a good thing to do. So here we go. <clears throat> Edang men yati nang hotu sukita hontu nyata yo. Edang men yati nang hotu sukita hontu nyata yo. Edang men yati nang hotu. Sukita on to Nyata Yo. Okay, and I will give you a short blessing just to wish you a very happy new year and to uh, get a good start for the uh, for the new year and so you can carry on with the Buddhist practice and all of these kind of things. So so here we go. Nati me sadanang an yang budo me sadanang varang ete na sachava jena sote te hotu sabada nati me sadanang an yang dam ho me sadanang varang ete na sachava Jena soti te hotu sabada nati me saranang anya sango me saranang varang ete na sachava jena soti te hotu sabada Sadu, sadu, sadu. Okay, everyone. Bye bye. Happy New Year. Thank you, Ajahn. Happy New Year. Okay. Very bye. good. Take care.